Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Portfolio Committee on Mineral Resources and Energy has held virtual meetings to assess the short to medium term plans of the department and some of the entities that fall under it. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of what has been shared with Lorman. Why are these meetings being held now and what are they designed to achieve? Well, these meetings are taking place because uh, the different uh, departments need to get their budgets approved in line with the budget that was announced by Finance Minister Tito and Boweni in February. So they have the annual performance plans and their strategic plans which they present uh, so that their budgets can be approved by the Parliament. The issue this time around is because of COVID-19, there's going to be an amendment budget on the 24th of June and that is going to mean that these, amend these uh, annual performance plans are going to have to be revised again. But we need to first approve the budget so that we can amend it. It seems a protracted process, but that's why these various portfolio committees are meeting at the moment, not just for mineral resources and energy, but across the board. From an energy perspective, what are some of the things that have struck you about these meetings? The two, the two real highlights that have come out, or lowlights as many would see it, is the emphasis and priority that the DMRE is giving to a new nuclear build program in, in its uh, annual performance plan, as well as in its five-year strategic plan. Now, as we know, nuclear is not really included in the allocation for the integrated resource plan and, uh, to 2030 although the plan does make reference to developing a roadmap for new nuclear, specifically small-scale modular reactors, into the future. Now, this is quite disturbing as, uh, you know, the biggest component of, of the uh, RP is about building uh, renewable energy plants, which are now being shown to be the cheapest new form of electricity coming into the system and are the easiest uh, to finance and to build. And the problem at the moment is that we actually don't have a procurement program at all underway in South Africa for any large scale utility programs uh, or projects. We know that the, the, the ones that were belatedly uh, procured um, under the bid window four and 4.5 are being built. But beyond that, we haven't procured any more. There's also a lot of uh, regulatory impediments to the building of distributed generation. This is the self-generation component. We are seeing some regulatory changes there, but those have been met with fairly coolly by the markets and aren't seen as ready enough. We're seeing major delays at NERSA uh, clearing the way for concurrence on ministerial determinations that will allow for both distributed generation as well as uh, a large-scale utility build, as well as emergency power procurement. So these are really the priorities, and instead the DMRE is giving priority to uh, a technology that does not exist. Small-scale modular reactors are not commercial and are unlikely to play any role in alleviating South Africa's uh, short-term energy crisis. Then secondly, we've seen one of the entities that falls under the department, uh, the Central Energy Fund, proposing quite an audacious restructuring plan the consolidation of the business. And in that plan, really raising uh, some really hair-raising issues around trying to access part of the revenue pot, 25% uh, of the fuel levy, any, uh, some of the proceeds coming in the form of the carbon taxes, as well as making a grab for key sectors within the future energy market, such as uh, being the designated provider of uh, liquefied natural gas infrastructure into South Africa, building a new crude oil refinery, becoming the custodian or the owner on behalf of the state of all of, a, of several other key energy infrastructure assets, as they call them. And this is, uh, <laughs> this is from an entity whose uh, subsidiaries, particularly Petra SA, have failed dismally in the past to deliver, deliver on the mandate. So those are some of the two, as I described, lowlights that have emerged from the committee meetings. What is all this saying about where the department is at at this point? I think it really tells us that the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy is currently out of touch with what the real needs of the energy market are, what the needs of the sector are, how important it is to deal with decisively 
with this uh, electricity prevailing electricity gap that we know is going to return once the post-COVID uh, market starts to recover and demand starts to recover again. Uh, we know it seems that obviously we bought ourselves a bit more time in terms of load shedding, but there's still going to be a risk of load shedding uh, when demand recovers, hopefully sooner rather than later, although with the lockdowns being extended, demand will probably remain depressed for some time. So we, we need real solutions and uh, small modular reactors are not real solutions. Uh, distributed solar on rooftops and distributed uh, other uh, energy efficiency is a real solution and can be financed. We've already proved that. A large scale utility uh, wind farms and solar farms can be built and can be built on time and in budget and off the fiscal balance sheet that's been proven. So these are the real solutions. We need to get the impediments out the way for the building of these solutions. And then on the uh, Central Energy Fund, yes, it does need to restructure. But I think the, some of the proposals in that restructuring plan really needs some very tight scrutiny, not only by the lawmakers, but energy stakeholders, because this is a real power grab and one that can have long-term effects on the uh, market. It's not only a grab of revenue, but precious revenue at this time, which is in short supply, as we know, with uh, tax revenues falling and with the outlook for the economy looking so dismal. So for the CEF to be trying to take um, revenue out of that pot is somewhat uh, audacious. But it really needs much better scrutiny than what we've seen and a much bigger debate in society. Can we really contemplate building a new crude oil refinery in a market that is so uncertain uh, in terms of the future of mobility and the future of fossil fuels in particular in that mobility mix as the electrification of just about everything takes hold across the globe. So it really shows a department that is misguided at the moment, that needs to get its head around the energy sector in a much more real way and not to be pandering to incumbent forces and not to be playing politics with uh, our energy future. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news and analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletters.